morning i'm unmuted camera's working i love this studio i love how well this stuff works uh good morning to everybody it is tuesday january 5th um and uh we're getting right into it so uh yesterday was kind of a shortish stream for me uh we we went through um a bunch of stuff that I'd added to the studio. In fact, I've got one more thing that uh, I've added. We talked about cameras and stuff yesterday. I have this overhead cam, which you can see here. And um, I added this new piece here. This is a mount for uh, like a camera. You can see I've got the little screw tip right here. And this mount is going to allow me to m basically take my cell phone uh, and I'll set it like this. And it'll sit in a mount just about like that right here in front of me. Um, and it'll give you a full view of what's happening here in front of me. So it'll show you not only my screen that I see, but my keyboard, my mouse, and the stream decks and stuff. We probably won't use this angle a ton on this stream. But as I talked about yesterday, for doing these card breaks, when I have a bunch of baseball cards in my hands, this will be right here. I'm going to put it down for a second. Um, and my hands will be here. And so as I'm opening packs and doing all this stuff, it'll be right here in front of me and be able to see exactly what's going on. So... Uh, I'm still waiting for the mount that, that's going to sit on top of this, but this is basically, uh, I love these. I've got four of these in my office now. 
I unscrew this, it's, uh, we'll go back to a regular camera too. It's one of these. It's just a simple like um, clamp that, uh, that just clamps onto the edge of the desk. And once it's done that, then I can very easily mount something on top of it. And what's cool about it is that's that's what I have up above me here for the overhead cam and uh, whatever. But it has it has a mount here, obviously, for uh, for a camera. But it also has these other two. So you can see there are angled ones uh, and ones off the side. So you can mount this pretty much any way you want. And so I have, uh, I guess I have three of them. I have one up here that holds the overhead cam uh, that we've seen. And then I have one over by my, uh, my desk when I sit down and work during the afternoons um, that holds a, uh, a small uh, LED light panel uh, because it's kind of dark over there. And so I need some light on my face when I'm doing voice calls and stuff with my team. And now I have this third one here. And this is what's going to hold my phone when I'm doing uh, kind of hands-on stuff here in front of me. So I'm uh, pretty excited about all that. But what I, uh, what I want to do today, and I'm still building my familiarity with it, is that before the break, one of the last things that we did with coding was starting to write some tests to really think about what the, write some tests to handle how we think about handling the handler input, uh, the request envelope, all the stuff that we use for Alexa skills. And uh, good morning, Kevin Evans. Kevin Evans is my newest subscriber on YouTube. So um, I, as I mentioned, I'm gonna do a lot of these card breaks on YouTube and uh, hopefully Kevin and uh, maybe some of you others will, will try to get in on that. Um, Gold Zulu, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for lurking. Um, but before the break, before I took a, a little holiday break, we were working on writing some tests to kind of abstract away the handler input from our, not only our test, but also from our application. Now, there's still some things that I need to figure out in all of this uh, because Corey Haynes uh, gave me a lot of good insights and in how we want to do these things. But I feel like I still have a bit to learn about this. So we'll, we'll flip over. You can see my code here. Uh, come on, Stream Deck. There we go. Um, and I've, I've added a couple of things. I'm going to spend a little time just with like some plumbing kind of stuff that we need to get done. But um, one of the first things that we did was think about writing some tests so that when I pass in a specific voice, that my my poly.wrap voice function automatically returns the speech that I provided with that voice wrapping around it, but only if I provide a valid uh, voice. And so I think there's a couple of things that I want to spend time on this morning. The first is I want to go into the actual poly wrap voice function, which looks like this. Um, and I have this array of values. So this is good. The problem with this list is that I, uh, stop it. The problem with this list is that I have to manually manage it in two places because you can see that I have here that I'm calling poly.voices.brian. And if we look at poly.voices, you can see that I've started using that array to create a bunch of objects strings basically, um, that contain all of the names and then I'm exporting all of those so that when I say something like, um, well, let's go here. Yeah, when I say poly.voices.brian where I'm including poly. Um, good morning, Corey. Um, when I'm talking about poly.voices.brian that I don't have to make sure that I have the right accents and capitalization and spellings and all that stuff. Um, I can see what the list is and I can use those. So. One of the things that I'd like to do is get this array out of here and only rely on the data that's coming out of this. But that means I need to finish this list. So I thought uh, quickly I would do a little um, data management and fill in the rest of this and then go back to, um, I, I, I actually haven't used Mocha. But um, I found Jess to be very familiar, and there's tons and tons of examples. I would imagine there's plenty for Mocha as well, but I uh, I don't have nearly the experience with Mocha that I do with Jest. But most of the the modern testing uh, modules are uh, are quite robust, and um, I just like the way that that Jest plays out. So that's kind of why I focused my time there. But I've heard good things about Mocha too. So uh, I don't know that there's necessarily a wrong choice, but um, I found that there are lots of examples and blog posts and all sorts of things 
for Jest. And I, because of that, I've gravitated to Jest. Okay, so let's let's get into this first. We're just gonna take some of these values. I got to, uh, I think I have Celine, so we need like Chantal. Let's just take a couple of these, not that many. And we're just gonna do some things. So what I would like to do, and we did this, um, with a, with another place where we I think we were working on suits or values of cards where we basically did a map uh, of the export on this and we were able to uh, another thing that I need to consider is that some of these voices won't work without a, a language wrapper around them as well um, so that's something else that I'll need to consider whether or not I actually want to include all of these um, or if I want to add some functionality to say like oh well these aren't just going to be names anymore. Now I need a, a language tag to go with them. Um, I think that's probably the right way to go, but I want to I want to get into this first and just get the, the base structure. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Good morning, Katal. Good morning, good morning. Um, in order, I need to do Chantal next. And then I need to do Regina. And then I need to do Jano and Dora and then Emma. We're getting there. We'll we'll get it. Emma, Emma, Emma. I guess we could just do it this way. Let's just take the whole list and we'll just delete them and then we can just kind of do that. Just to have a reference on screen here. Okay. Next one, Enrique. What's nice about this is that I'm I'm hoping to keep this as a file, uh, you know, as a, a main file in my projects, but it should be really easy to add new voices to my application as they're released. Because I would imagine at some point there's going to be more voices um, that we make available, that Alexa makes available, and uh, it would be really nice to be able to just add those here once and uh, make them available to my users. So maybe we just do it this way. Let's see if we can. Do them one at a time. All right. What I what I imagine is going to happen here, um, and we'll have to go look in the docs to make sure that I get this right, is I'm going to have to change these objects to have a locale as well, um, because there there is some logic there that we need to make positive uh, works. remember how to spell the Italian version of Giorgio. Uh, Gwyneth. Oh. Um, I, hey, I heard a good argument for those of you that are on the fence about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Um, I'd love your opinions on this. I know that was probably a debate in many of your households over the break. Um, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I, I saw a very interesting thing. I am a, I'm an avid viewer of TikTok, and I saw the most convincing argument for why it is, in fact, a Christmas movie. Um, aside from, if you happen to watch Die Hard 3, Die Hard with a Vengeance, um, 
they make a ton of Christmas references in that movie. And that movie doesn't even take place during Christmas. Uh, I also thought that was an interesting uh, thing to notice how many times they mention Christmas things like Santa Claus, um, even for a movie that is not Christmassy. Um, I mean, Goldzula, there's some language. There's, I mean, there's no sexual anything. Um, there's not, there's not even really much violence. Um, but I, I would be curious to know how, what everybody thinks is Die Hard a Christmas movie. And then I'll present my argument for why in fact it is a Christmas movie, but I'd love to know your opinion, um, on what you think it is. Uh, I think one of the, the, the fundamental criteria for whether or not it is a Christmas movie is if it weren't Christmas, could the movie still happen? Uh, and that's that's the big question for a lot of Christmas movies is, is it just that it's Christmas adjacent? Uh, a good example of this is the Wham! song, Last Christmas. Um, Last Christmas, I Gave You My Heart, that song. Um, I contend that that's not a Christmas movie. It just happened that he gave her his heart during Christmas. Um, but it could have happened anytime. Christmas isn't impactful on the story necessarily. Um Die Hard takes place specifically during Christmas because there's a Christmas party. Without the Christmas party, there wouldn't be a lack of security and a high population of important people. Um, but the argument that I've heard for the fact that the creators of the movie intended it to be a Christmas movie is the name of the bad guy. Uh, I'm not going to say it out loud, but does anybody know the name of the, the, the main villain from Die Hard 1? You should probably know this if you've seen the movie once or twice. Um, post it in the chat if you know it. Uh, I want to share something very interesting with all of you. Corey Haynes knows. It's Hans Gruber. That is correct. So check this out. Let's do a new window. Uh, let's bring this down here. Hans Gruber. Do you guys know... That yes, of course, Die Hard wikis and uh, Wikipedia has all that. But um, did you guys know I think it's this guy. Let's see. I gotta, I gotta find this guy. I thought he would be on Wikipedia, but maybe not. Anyway, I think it's this. Yeah. This guy that wrote Silent Night for Christmas uh, went by the name Hans Gruber. I know it's Franz Zaver Gruber, but um, he went by the name Hans Gruber. And uh, the dude wrote Silent Night. Clearly, 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 the creators of this movie um, intended <coughs> for this to be a Christmas movie. Anyway, that's the argument that I saw recently, and I thought that was very interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Major Lift, that's a good point. There is a sign right at the beginning of, uh, of Die Hard 3. But honestly, like I don't, I don't know that you necessarily don't want a seven-year-old to see it. In fact, I think that's a good opportunity for a conversation about uh, hate speech and bad language and stuff like that. Um, because honestly, I would rather my kid drop an F-bomb than that word. Um, you might make your grandma gasp if, you, if she heard either of them. But I feel like... Uh, the word from Die Hard 3 that he, he wears on that sign uh, has a lot more hate for it. Um, but I think, I think it's a good conversation to have with your kids for sure. But I'm with you, Major Lift. It, it, you know, that's one of those things that you may or may not want to expose your kids to, but it, it helps them understand why, uh, why he's wearing that sign and why he gets attacked. So, yeah. Uh, it's a good, I, think, I think it's good to have those conversations with your kids instead of trying to protect them from it, um, which... I, I do understand the protection, but um, it makes them more empathetic to the world when they understand um, just how, yeah, definitely not. Um, Jan is the next one. All right. Is 
a few more of these in here. Uh, Ewa. Feliz. I know. Hans Inez Ivy. Basic Jan. All right. Nope, not one I should do. I just realized I just completely stopped talking. Is uh, KARL. I have so many Amazon deliveries coming today. I'm so excited. Um, ordered a few things after Christmas on sale. And um, got some cool things to deck out this office. So I have, uh, we talked about the stream decks I'm using yesterday, but I have, um, I have uh, a stream deck XL, which has 32 buttons on it. That is coming a couple in a couple of days. I've also got the mount that's going here. Um, I just had a, um, a new like big heater that's going to be in my garage. Um, that's that was delivered yesterday. Uh, I'm also <clears throat> uh, we bought some Christmas lights on sale. I just I have a ton of deliveries coming in. It's kind of exciting. Um, did anybody get anything cool for the holidays, like a gift? Joey Justin. Um, I, I did get something cool, actually. I can show you guys. If I can find it. Where did that go? So it's just this uh, it's just this little black box. Here we'll go to we'll go to full cam for this. Just this little black box, but if you uh, if you turn it on. He doesn't wave as much as I would like him to, but it's basically one of those wacky wobbly fan guys that you see at like car dealerships, but it's like a little one. He's awfully loud though, so I don't like to keep him on during the stream. But uh, how about that? If I tilt it forward a little bit, he falls over once in a while. There we go. I thought this thing was great. This, uh, my wife got me this in my stocking. Yeah, that's pretty good. You just have to tilt it forward a little bit, it looks like. And that works great. But if I keep it perfectly vertical... Oh my god, this is so good. This is working better than it ever has. Anyway, that's uh, that's a thing I got in my stocking for Christmas. I also got these. I got to figure out where I want to put them, though. I don't know if I'm going to put them on camera or not. We'll get back to adding names to a list in a second. But have you guys seen these? It's uh, they're Christmas lights, but they're like vertical LEDs. Um, okay, let's see if I can. 
I don't, I don't know where I want to put them, but I, I think they need to be on stream here somewhere because they're pretty cool to look at. Let's, let's untie these and see if I can light them up for you. Uh, wait a second, Q311. You're an AWS Alexa certified developer. You passed the test? Um, they, these are called, Mr. Smoothie, these are called uh, meteor shower rain lights. Um, and my wife and I, uh, we were looking on Amazon. We found, oh, there's like 15 different brands of these. And so we ordered all of them. Like we ordered wacky weight of, yeah, wacky waving inflatable tube guy. That's the thing I was thinking of. Um, so my wife and I ordered all of the different brands and tried them all out to see which ones we liked. And then we bought them on, uh, bought them on Amazon and they were like, uh, these sets are like, I don't know, $15. It wasn't, it wasn't terribly expensive. Um, but the plan is we, we bought, I think we bought six sets that we're going to put up in our, oh, this is such a long cable. My goodness. Um, they're all tangled. Of course they're, they run that far apart. You can see, so that's like a, almost two feet apart, maybe 18 inches. Let's see if we can get these lit up. Do I have a power outlet I can plug into? Power in this office is really hard to come by. I do not have a single power outlet available on there. Let's see how we can unplug an Alexa for a minute. I have uh, I have more power coming. That's what they look like. Kind of rainbowy, they kind of twinkle like that, but they, they run from top to bottom. Oh, I thought they were kind of cool. Uh, so I gotta figure out where I wanna hang these though. It's a lot of wiring, but I feel like there's gotta be a place for these someplace. I don't know, maybe, maybe like up here. What does that look like on? Yeah, you don't even see those on the stream. I don't know, we'll have to play with this, but this is these are these are kind of cool because they're the rainbow ones. They also make white ones and blue ones and uh, like three different colors of white. Okay, plugged back in. Oh, that's the other thing I have coming is uh, I'm gonna completely redo the power here uh, at this desk. The way I have it set up right now, I have one outlet that's kind of right here next to the next to me on the wall, and one of the outlets goes over here. And literally everything on this wall is more or less plugged into that one outlet, except for these two beams. The beam lights, um, there's an outlet way over there and they're plugged into that. But um, the lamp and all of the Alexa devices and the, the triangle here behind me, those are all um, plugged into this one thing. And that's just one of the outlets here. Then the other one is an extension cord under this desk. The desk itself, the computer, the lights, uh, the camera, all of this stuff is plugged into the other outlets. So I'm really taxing that one outlet, but the way that this office is set up, I just don't have, I don't have another place to plug stuff in. So I'm going to have to figure out how to remanage this, but I ordered some power bricks. I have, what did I do with that other one? Oh yeah, this. So some of the things that are on this desk, only need power, like the, if I go to overhead, um, I have this charger right here for my phone. It's just a, like you just set it down and it automatically charges, um, but it's not connected to anything, right? There's no data transfer, it's just power. And I have a couple of other things um, that only just need USB power. They don't necessarily need to be connected to the computer. And so I bought one of these. If you guys don't buy stuff from uh, Anker, Anker, Let's see if we can see that logo there. There we go. Um, this is the brand that I buy all of my electronics from anymore. Um, like for charging, their stuff is so good, so reliable and really affordable. Um, so anyway, so I bought this. This is going to be mounted with some 3M strips right under the desktop here. So if I go back to this, like right, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but like it fits perfectly right under the surface of this desk. You can see it's just sliding out. So I think I'm going to give myself a place where I can run some USB power, but this is only a charging brick. There's no data transfer. That's just for charging.
but I could plug my phone thing into that and like a charger for my headphones because I have uh, I have a little hook under the desk here for my headphones. Um, but there's a couple other places where just USB power would be useful. But I have two big bricks. Uh, let's let's see if we can just bring those up because they're they're kind of cool looking. Uh, power, power, power. Let's go to. Orders. We'll, we'll just see all the crazy stuff. I've, I have a new uh, new HD webcam. I'm going to replace the overhead cam here with that one. And then some baseball stuff. But these, I didn't. I thought these were the anchor ones. I ended up changing my mind. So these are nice because the outlets are really spaced out. Um, but the the um, the power towers that I have set up over here to run all the Alexa devices and everything, they, they're made by the same company. And so these are also going to be plugged in right under they're like they're going to be mounted up under the desk so that I can get up all the wires, get everything away. You can see with the office cam, but you can see um, like right here. Oh, that camera's not working. It's locked. Oh, that's weird. Well, anyway, uh, if you I, I was going to point and just show you, but you can see where the open window is kind of under the desk and all those wires that are hanging there. I want all that to go away and I'd like to be able to bundle them up and wrap them and put them uh, up under the desk. I have a, I have a rack there to hold them, but there's just so many. Um, yeah, I'm with you, QU311. I, I wish that uh, Echo was a good outlet strip citizen as well. The, the brick is huge. And I feel like they could put all of that, the transformer part of the plug, put it inside the device and then just give me a regular plug, uh, a good citizen plug. So anyway, so these are the, these are the two outlet boxes that I'm going to mount up under the desk. This gives me four more USB ports and six plugs uh, to work with. And that, that should make things pretty good. Um, what, what else do I have coming? Webcam, uh, some extra USB ports for my computer. This brand new PC I got, I was going through it. I only have four USB ports on the back of the PC. And then I have two more like up on top. But I don't want to use those because then you got like weird wires sticking up out of the top of your machine. Those are the Christmas lights that are coming. This is the mount thing I bought. This is the, I like this. This is aluminum. Uh, it's kind of like metalish. That's what's going to hold my phone. Uh, so you just kind of like clamp clamp it down. Um, but it looks pretty awesome. So that, that's what's going to mount on the, I know you guys can't see me at all. That's what's going to mount on the little thing I have here on my desk. All right, let's get back to some data and coding and stuff. Uh, I could go on so many little tangents. Uh, all right, so we got to Kendra. Let's get rid of Kendra. Keep going. Why don't you like that? Why, what are you freaking out about for that line? Oh. Okay. See that? I am still full screen cam. Sorry, guys. Um, thank you. Const, this is the, these are the ones that worry me. I'm going to do LEA just for my own, uh, my own purposes, but it's this actually. So do this just to make my life a little easier.
Kevin Evans, do you use the Kevin voice for everything? I would. Uh, I would use the I would use the Kevin voice for all of my skills if my name was Kevin. Uh, yeah, Windows 10 probably wants an update. I, I probably should do that. Let's see what, how much time I got. Um, yeah, I don't want to do it now. When are you going to do it? Uh, tonight? No. I got, I got, oh, it's not going to do it until May. All right. Uh, live, we can get rid of all those. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know what that uh, that update reference is. It's 2018, so I don't even have any Apple devices plugged into this computer. I actually don't know what that's for. But it looks like I will reboot um, later. No, I think we're good. I don't think it's going to auto. It's not going to restart me while I'm sitting here. At least I hope not, but we'll uh, we'll find out. We'll uh, we'll run that risk. So I think I want to go read the docs on this before I get too much deeper into this. I'm about halfway through, and I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna regret having to go back through all of these again. So let's. Okay, let's go look at um, um, all right, so This doesn't help me. No, this isn't helping me. There's a place. There's a place that shows me which languages have to be done in specific, which voices have to be done in the specific language. And I don't remember. Hmm. I don't remember, remember how to do this. It's good to learn, right? Good to learn. Oh, maybe it's under the SSML. Voice names don't use accented characters. That's also interesting. So like Leia doesn't actually use it. So why why do they have that in? Oh, it's so dumb. Okay. Let's make sure that we don't do that. I don't think I have any other accents in here yet. Okay, cool. Glad I checked. And then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do tests for each of these to make sure that they actually work. Assume the sample is from an NUS skill, and because Kendra is an NUS voice, no lang tag is required. If the sample was from a skill that does not have an NUS locale, then the lang tag should be added to and set to NUS. But I think you could you could set. Now let's let's try this. By default, I could just have it always provided. It's not hurting anything to have the US one even when you have a US thing. So let's let's verify that. That's always a good thing to know. So let's go to test. And I hate that this tool is hidden because it has nothing to do with the skill at all. Put this in here and we say, play. Your secret is safe with me. 
Now, what happens if I get rid of this lang tag? Because I'm saying that I'm in NUS. The secret is safe with me. Well, that sounded different. That's interesting. So it's doing its best approximation, but it's not necessarily um, giving me the same voice. Let's let's do it this way. The secret is safe with me. Your secret is safe with me. Those are different. I mean, you can hear at least how he's enunciating the words. Those are different. So it feels like what I really need to do is make sure that I have this language tag wrapping each of these every time. Uh, and I don't think it would hurt me. Let's see what happens if I, if I wrap a NGB tag in an ENUS. I would guess that's the same as what I was just doing, but let's let's try it. The secret is safe with me. Your secret is safe with me. Awesome. Can you guys hear that? Is that audio coming through? I don't know how well you guys can hear that. Um, but they definitely sound different. Very interesting. Okay. Very quiet. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's coming through my speakers, I need to, that's something I'm going to have to play with, uh, on the stream is how do I get the audio pass through? That's something I'm going to have to figure out. I don't, that's one of the things with StreamYard that I don't think I have a very easy way to manage it. Uh, no major lift. I don't think so. I think, I, I don't think so. We can try this though. Just if you think it's just varying it because it's it wants it to be different, let's let's test that theory. We'll we'll make ENUS again. Let's do it three times. Your secret is safe with me. Your secret is safe with me. Your secret is safe with me. No, the NGB one is just different. This is this is pretty cool because um, I've definitely used Brian's voice, but I've never put the the tag on it. So what this means is that I need these now to be objects, and this is going to be name, and this is going to be locale. And now we need to know what each of these are, because I do not know that off the top of my head as much as I wish I did. So I also noticed that this is a shorter list, I think, than um, all of the poly voices. So it looks like this table lists the Amazon poly voices supported by Alexa. So I also have to limit myself to only be this list. I was using the full I was using the full list um, of poly voices, and it looks like I thought that you could use any of them. It looks like this is the specific. I mean, this is still a good amount, but um, man, okay. So H I I N is my first one, and that's Hindi India, like that. So. But in doing this, now we need to think about how all of this other stuff is going to work. Hmm. Feels like that's how I want this to work. Well, let's let's do this. Let's let's change these. So we're gonna have this on the beginning of each of these. We'll just dump that in there.
Yeah, I, I was uh, I was that way earlier. We we did some uh, we did some Excel development um, when we initially created and alphabetized this list. Actually, I don't know if you were here for that day, Major Lift, but uh, I'm a big fan of using Alexa to be able to, or not Alexa, using Excel to handle some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily something you can tie it directly to an accent, uh, Gold Zulu, but I think it is. Um, it's tied to more or less where that place is supposed to be. Yeah. That's all updated. This file is at least not broken anymore. I would expect my tests to fail. Yeah. Because now it's getting object object instead of the actual thing. And so wrap voice, no. First we need to think about this. This stuff needs to be dot name. That all looks good. Let's see where we are now. I have two tests that are failing. So I'm expecting it to give me Carla, and it's giving me nothing. Why? I think that's because of this comparison here now. So we need to fix this so that I think that gets me what I want. Closer. Can we do that? For the Carla one, it's still doing object, object. Why? I tell it what voice I want, and then it should. Carla, Carla. Hmm. Well, Major Lift, um, I think that um, what you're saying is if the person wants the voices originally, into, I, I don't think that I'm necessarily giving my user that kind of flexibility. If the point of this is to let them select or let me select what voice to use, um, but realistically, I, I don't, I'm not giving my user that kind of granular choice. Like I want to use Brian, but I want it to be the Indian mm -hmm. locale. I think what makes sense is to just hard code this stuff in. Say if they're using Amy, then they're using this locale for the voice. That not for everything. We'll still use their normal locale for everything else. But when you use the Carmen voice, it has to be the ES ES voice, right? Spanish Spain, um, because otherwise it may not sound correct. And we wouldn't want someone that's a native Spanish speaker necessarily to be speaking English with a Spanish accent uh, unless it's supported. So. We'll have to we'll have to see how that's going to work here. <sighs> okay. Let's try this. Uh, well, I'm actually going to. I mean, I want to get this working, but uh, ultimately, I'm getting rid of this. Poly voice list. Um, we'll do the that name. Voice. 
I think this still runs into the same problem. What if I pass in undefined to this? Um, I think that's still... I think this is still going to get me the same issue. Because I can't, I can't check for voice not. I think what I need to do is just something simple like if um, voice should exist. Yeah. No, I, I mean I see what you're saying, but I still am relying on this voice dot name to exist. And if they pass in something that doesn't have a name property because it's just undefined or whatever, um, I have a test that verifies that, and that test will still break, That which is actually what's happening here. So I think I can do this. If and we can do this. Yeah, I could end them together. Sometimes I just like to keep the ideas separate. Don't you like? I think I have all my parentheses correct. Are you, uh... oh, you're right. There is there is one more parentheses. Okay, try this again. Nice. Okay, so this now checks and makes sure that voice actually exists, and then if it does, we can check to see if the array contains the name that we've passed in. Otherwise, it just returns my speech with no wrapper, which is also fine. Um, so we have all of our names here. We need to give them the appropriate locales. So we're going to have to just jump back and forth here. So Amy is ENGB. And the other thing that we're going to need to do in this wrap voice is we got to add that other tag. So if we look at this here, it's this. So we got to add this to our code as well. And then we're going to have to change our tests. But it goes right here. Okay. So that's great. And this needs to be voice.locale. And we need to take this into our tests. That, that, all right, test still pass. Great. Now, if I just delete that for a second. Make sure that that's why it's passing. Cool. All right, so now I'm I'm going to be every time I wrap the poly voice, I'm going to be inserting not only the voice name but also the language locale. Now I just need to get these right. Uh, let's see if we can do 
just like this. I don't think that's what I wanted to do. Voice. Okay. This might actually be easier if I do that. And then let's just go find Ivy is ENUS and Joanna. And Joey. And Justin. And Kendra. Kimberly, Matthew is not in here yet, so we'll add him. Um, major lift. I'm probably going to be on until like eleven thirty, eleven forty-five. Um, I. I think I'm doing office hours today on the Alexa channel. And so I need a little break in there just to get some water and lunch and all that. So um, I would guess probably at least another half an hour though. And uh, this is going to be the NUS. So and we need to add Matthew to our list. And then Sally is also not in our list. Alexa Office Hours is always at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, um, which is about an hour from hmm. about an I hour. I know from that now. one. I know. Uh, about an hour from now. Uh, const Sally. like about this what I can't have today okay all right so Matthew and Sally are there and that covers the ENUS ones now we have Nicole and Russell Paul, based on Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe, these are the ENAU, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's how they actually pick those names, but that's how I remember them. Cole and Russell are great. Okay, Amy, it's already in here somewhere. ENGB, Brian is ENGB. And Emma is ENGB. Um, a D? Wait. Why did I think... A D does both? What do I... Oh, no! How does that work? How can a DD be E N I N and be H I I N? I did not realize that there was a possible overlap. Whoa. Uh, I don't know how to handle that. Because I can't have two. I mean, I guess I could have like a DDHI and a DD 
en. No, I don't want to have an array. I don't want this one, this one to stand out differently um, than the others. I would rather have an, a DDEN and then a DDHI. I think that's probably what I'm going to do so that I can specifically pick. Yeah. How do I decide what the default is? That's all. I've... Nope, I think that's I think I'm making the right choice here. So we're just gonna do this. We're gonna have an ADD HI. Do a dash. Okay. And then the DG a DD. Those are good now. Okay, so we've we've gotten past it. However, however we've gotten past it. All right. Next one is Ravina. Uh, yeah, nine. Right. French Canadian. All right, Chantal. F R C A. And then Celine is F R F R. And Leah. Leah. I worked with a girl uh, who spelled her name L E I G H. Like that. Um, and she pronounced that Leah. I definitely called her Lee for the first couple of weeks that she started there, but she pronounced it Leah and was happy to correct me. Um, she was a wonderful person. I really enjoyed working with her, but that, um, You guys are testing the tornado siren today. Mine is, um, my test is on Wednesday at noon. Cal, this is another FRFR. Wanting to capitalize that for some reason. Okay, Hans, we did Hans for sure. Hans is D-E-D-E, -E. makes sense. We didn't get to Marlene yet. Marlena, it's probably Marlena in German. Name. I dated a girl very briefly in high school named Marlene. It's not a name you see very often anymore. Marlene. Vicky is definitely not in our list. We haven't gotten that far in the alphabet. Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Vicky, your locale is also Germany. We already handled uh, Carla is next. Carla is not Hindi. IT, IT. Giorgio. IT, IT. And Bianca 
is IT, IT. All right, Japanese. We haven't gotten these in here yet. Mizuki. I Z U K I equals name locale this has to be JPJP, JP, right? Yeah, J A J P. Oh. And then Katumi. A A dash J P. Oh. All right, that's Takumi, and let's add these to our list. Go Mizuki. Is someone that's a mod? Can you uh? Can you ban block? Get rid of that message. Uh, so annoying. I don't have the, the mod you open right now or I would do it myself. Mizuki Takumi, okay. So. Next one is Vittoria. That is PTBR. I got to go to Brazil twice last year. Last year? No, twice in 2019. Um, here, let me deal with. No, that's not. I need to go to the mod view. Hold on. That's the button I'm looking for. Okay. Cool. Back to our page. We just added Vittoria. And Camilla is next. Camilla, Camilla. PTBR. Yeah, I got to go to Brazil twice in 2019. And it was fantastic. I had a really nice time there. Um, Ricardo is not in my list yet. Carlos Ricardo. So I, I'd like to start a discussion. I, uh, I'm interested to know your thoughts on this because this is something that in my head feels like it should exist. And I don't see anyone doing this. And it just feels like it's the next step in... Uh, development, internet, whatever. Um, and that is, I'm building a static version of this data, which is fine. Um, but it feels like it would be incredibly useful to have an API that I could call that would give me this information whenever I want it. And you could rate limit it. I don't think I need it very often, but it would be nice to just like call an API someplace that gives me a list of all of the voices that are available, and then I could use them. But it has all the metadata I need, right? It has a locale. Maybe it has some other things that I'm not thinking of right now. But think about this for everything. Like, to go back to a baseball card example, right? Um, I want to be able to talk to Tops, the company that makes baseball cards. And I want to be able to get a list of all the cards for a specific set. Like I should just be able to call and get that information. It's it's already available on their website in a very non-structured format. But why not give me a place where I can do this in a structured format? I can just call and get this information once, twice, a hundred times. I don't I don't know. Um, the cost of setting up an API is not significant. And if you rate limit it to like oh you can only call this once every five minutes or day or whatever, that's fine. 
But if my application could call every day and make sure that I'm getting an updated list of all of this stuff, it would allow me to not have to constantly maintain and manage a lot of this. So curious your thoughts on that. What if, what if all the world's data um, that's owned by all of these companies, it's read only, but it would give me access to like specific curated lists of things uh, all over the place. I need this. I want this. Um, and I wish more places actually provided that kind of information. Postman offer, how could Postman offer, like this Postman is the ability for me to call those APIs, but what I want is for everybody to have those APIs existing. I feel like that's the piece that's missing is that most of this data isn't there. Here's a good example. I just want a list of all of the products um, that Ikea makes, right? Just a list with prices. That feels like if everybody just did that, we could all build cool stuff to help support and grow their businesses. I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. That's just a thought I have. It's a, it's a very utopian view of what the future of data could be. And I wish more people would just take the initiative to do it. Especially when you already have APIs, just give me some endpoints that give me some basic lookup data that I can use for all sorts of things. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Okay, I just added Matthew Mizuki, Ricardo is in the list. Okay, so now we're on a Spanish American, Penelope. I don't have her in here yet. I know that there are data feeds, uh, Q311 uh, at OData, but it's not everything. I, I just feel like this is one of those futuristic, be a good member of society things that you should do if you have data. Now, if it's secret or proprietary or whatever, of course not, you're not gonna share that. But when it's just a list of your products or a list of items that you created, like baseball cards, um, man, give me a, give me a reference for that. Give me a place I can go look it up. I know, Corey, I know, I know. Getting corporations to be good stewards and participants is probably asking too much, but I, I just feel like, couldn't we shame them into it? Couldn't it just be a thing? I guess I have to demonstrate how there's an ROI for them. But if everybody could match up their data and use it for cool stuff, I feel like that's, that's something. E-S-U-S. Okay, Penelope is done. Lupe. Do I have Lupe in here yet? No, we didn't get that far. I just hate doing this kind of stuff. Like, I'm just copying this from an unstructured web page and putting it in a place. Maybe I'll talk to Amazon. Uh, I think I know some people over there. I'll see if I can't figure out a way to at least get Alexa to do it. And then we can use that as an example. Lupe and Miguel. Am I Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Major Lift. Like, it doesn't exist. No one sees it as a business need. There's probably not a lot of people asking for it because they're doing what I'm doing. Um, but I don't think this needs to be done. Yes, yes. Lupe, Lupe and Miguel and Penelope. Lupe can go here. Miguel can go here. And why don't you like Marlene? Penelope can go here. I got all those. We're really close. Um, Conchita, do we have that in here? We do. Sweet. This is ESES. It's selfishly, this is really nice for me to have privately in my own stuff, but I just feel like it would be a lot better. Yeah. 
Yes, Max for Mia. Did I get to Mia? No. Yeah, it's ES and Max. Now we can go in and get rid of all the voices that are still H I I N because those are ones I can't use. Apparently there was a lot of. Astrid can't use it. Come on. I want to use Dora's voice. It should be actually Dora the Explorer's voice. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Um, so where did these other voices come from? These are from the master poly list. Because there are more poly voices than you can use in Alexa skills. You can only use certain poly voices in Alexa skills. And so these other voices that I have, I went to the master poly list. I forgot that um, there are voices that you can't use. Okay, it looks like we have a nice clean list now. I can get rid of this. And then I need to see... Oh, come on. I just got rid of a bunch of them. Why aren't you changing the color for me? It was not Bianca, Camilla, Carla, Carmen. It's not. Oh. Celine is. Chantal, Conchita, Cristiano's not. I don't know why it's not changing the colors for me. Okay. No ideas. Jacek isn't. John, not. Justin Carl is not. Kevin, Kimberly, Leah, Liv. Okay, not. Sia, yeah. Rupe, yeah. Marlene, Matthew, Miguel, Mizuki, Nicole. And now these all should be. All right, I think we uh, I think we did it. So the other thing that I would like to do, if we can figure this out, is instead of looking in this array here, I would like poly voice list to be that map of voices. So we should be able to first bring in voices here. Let's do that. And then I think it's something like, I have to remember how to do this. The voices.map. I have to remember how to do this. This is, uh, this is not syntax I have in my head. I get to this map dot Oh, happy new year's LJ. Okay, so the ones that failed, oh, what don't you like? Kevin is not defined. 
Kevin is not defined. Why is Kevin not defined? Kevin should be in there. Looks like we got a delivery. Was Kevin? Kevin's not in there. Interesting. When I hovered over it, I, I think I just skipped it. Doesn't like map.keys. Why can't I remember why? The delivery is almost certainly from Amazon, yeah. My what am what am I doing? My map dot oh voices. Like that. Do you like that? Voices dot keys is not a function. Okay. We uh we did this. Kev yeah, Kevin's always causing problems. What? I feel like this should be showing me. If I do voices dot keys, that should be showing me the list of them. What am I doing wrong here? If I get get locale, you can see what's inside get locale. That's how this is supposed to work. So why with voices when I'm here, don't I see it? Hmm. That's pointing to the right place. Mia is also not in my list. Mia, 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 Mia. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Why are you not finding my file? Like if I do it over here, count voices equal require. Wow. Say, we're in the help intent. We could do that dot poly slash voices. If I do that. Do the same thing. Voices dot. I have all the things there. Maybe I'm just over. Maybe I'm just overreacting. But that that syntax showed me that it wasn't working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keystrokes, keystrokes. Um, okay, so. Let's talk about why it doesn't think Yeah, I feel like uh, I, I just got to remember what the syntax is. Maybe we can find it. Uh, let's do a new window. Let's open a folder to check. 
Yes, you know Alexa. That's fine. I definitely did this in here somewhere. Come on, that can't be right. We definitely did this. Is it in place? Come on. I love two factor auth, but I hate it when I'm trying to get this stuff fast. That's really the only place? Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, come on, I know I wrote this somewhere. MyMap.Keys. I really thought that's what I needed to do. Maybe it's object that keys? That could totally be it. Um, Provides voice tag to content when Brian is given. Uh, this is a little bit trickier. Poop. Um, Because that's hmm. no, I'm not actually using a map. What I have is this. We can. Uh, I have this file which just exports all of these individual objects, and what I need to do, what I really want to do, is get this. So I have, um, I have this condition that says, if the voice that I provided is in the list, um, let's see, what if I do this? Could that be, could that be my solution? Could that do it? Can I read two uppercase of undefined? Well, yeah, but we shouldn't be getting there because if voice is undefined, that's happening for both of them. Yeah.
Brian has a name. Carla has a name. Right, it's just an array of keys, which is okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. It. Yeah, but that's okay because I'm saying poly voice list, it's an array of keys. And my keys are these names here, this, this whole list. It's th these actual values, not the values that hide behind them. Um, yeah, it starts in 30 minutes startup. You're correct. I'm actually going to be signing off here in just a minute. So when I say poly voice list, it should be an array of those individual keys. And I'm checking to see if it includes the name that I've actually passed in, which is here. And that is not part of my poly voice list. Uh, honestly, why are people the worst? Um, yes, I pass in the object and then I'm comparing the name, the name property, this with basically with this, uh, it's not, it's not ideal. You're right, it won't work with the bilingual one. What I need is to create an array. Uh, maybe we just need a function for this. What I need to do is get this list of keys and then create an array that is these values, which is just gonna take some iteration. So we, ha we have our list. So let's say this is our voice um, key list. Poly key list. And then Um, the, the problem with this is that the values that I get back from this specifically major lift are not enumerable. I can't iterate through them. And so I need to get myself a list that is iterable in order to do that, which is what pulling these keys out will allow me to do because this gives me an iterable list, but it's only an iterable list of the keys. So by having the keys, then I could iterate through and pull the properties of each one, because I could say voice. So uh, let's make sure we get this right. I need to go soon too, uh, but let's do, always forget uh, the proper syntax for this too. Okay, so we do poly key list, got four each for each all lowercase. And then we have for each element, we're going to do a thing. Okay. So we'll say for each key, we're going to do that. I'm going to say 
Uh, voice list. Uh, push. Okay. No, we're going to do voices. Hmm. Voices already doesn't, it doesn't come in as an array. Um, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that it does not. I'm happy to try that. It would simplify everything. But I, I feel like I ran into this wall before where I needed to get them to be an iterable list. I will get clicks. Okay. Because I'm I'm grabbing them as keys. So once I have this, I can iterate. I can go through an array. I can do all that stuff. But this piece here cannot. Um, I have to refer to them directly. There, it's not iterable. So that's why I can't do that stuff. So to be able to do voices.sum, I think I would need an iterable list to do that, and I don't have that currently. I mean, we could try it, uh, but I, I think we're going to run into the same issue. So if I say if voices dot voices dot sum, and we'll uh, we'll use your stuff here. Um, we could say v, and then we're going to say v dot name. Yeah, that's all. All I'm trying to do is get it into an iterable form, and then this will be voice dot name. equals yes this is going to blow up but we'll see you just save me some work what did everything fail Voices.sum is not a function. Yeah, and that's because it's not iterable, so it won't have any of those. Um, okay, well, we'll have to put this on pause for now, but I think we're making some good progress. Uh, I got to get over and get ready for office hours and put some food in myself. So we will stop for here for now, um, and we'll pick this up again tomorrow morning, or maybe I'll work on it this afternoon. I don't know. But um, I'm going to have to go because I want to make sure... Uh, we, okay, I got 15 seconds. Major lift, drop it on me. What do you got? All right. If object dot values you have OBJ in there, is that going to be voices? Dot. I feel like I need to reference the name, right? Index of voice dot name is greater than minus one. Got all that. That, that feels weird. Yeah, Carla's coming back without getting the data she wants. Okay. No, I think I think that's interesting. Um, all right, awesome. Okay. I hey, I hate that. I hate to wrap it up like this, but I've got to do it because I got to get over to office hours. I got to check in with my team. Um, we had some shuffling of our team. We'll talk about that maybe during office hours, but um, I need to make sure somebody's on point for office hours today, and I don't know who that's going to be. So uh, I will see you guys all over there in about 25 minutes. All right. Thank you guys all for tuning in today. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning.